Hello everybody. Hey, I got some, another car to show you. This just came out by Class One Model Works. This is their second release. Um, if you remember, they were the guys that gave us the TWF10 intermodal car. And that thing is just an amazing piece. And that's also their own containers or, that they sold, sell on it. And uh, so I was really excited to get their second release the GSC HD flat car. And it's a really nice box. There's little magnets in the flap to hold it down. And here you go, you got a diagram of the flat car. And there's the car that I got. And I'll show you the end here. I got the LNAL car, which stands for Lucas Oil Rail Lines. That wasn't the original name of that railroad. Uh, the original name was the Louisville, New Albany, and Corydon Railroad. I hope I pronounced that correctly. In uh, Indiana. But they sold it to Lucas, and they made it the Lucas Oil Rail Line. I believe it's only like a 7.7 mile railroad, but that's, that's kind of interesting to have, you know, something that small. But And the reason I got this road name is that I don't have any LNAL rail cars and this did come in 15 different um road names and i'll have a link to their website in the description so you can go check this out and also they made four loads to go with these flat cars and i got the large pump they also made a uh, large bearing it's like a big circular thing an old transformer and a modern transformer so these look pretty nice so as always We'll take these out of the package and take a much closer look at them and uh, see what you guys think. Okay, we got everything out of the package. Uh, before we take a closer look, I want to tell you about two things. One is they include this paperwork in uh, your packaging box. And basically it says, you know, you, you got to have a little run in time to get the wheels to seat properly in the bearings. This does have rotating bearing caps. Or you can press, you know, middle of the car and run it back and forth kind of thing. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But also, uh, I started this video a couple nights ago. And when I took it out of the package, I noticed there was a problem with, I believe, this end. It was sticking up. Instead of being, you know, flat across, this end was actually up higher. And it threw out the coupler height so before I even started the second part of this video, I contacted Class 1 Model Works and uh, explained to them that the car was what I thought, that, well, defective, we'll say, and that it bent up towards the end and uh, see if they wanted to exchange it or what they wanted to do about it. And they got back to me within 24 hours, <clears throat> and they advised taking the truck off which is just held on with a screw and holding the center firmly and pushing down. And at first it didn't do much, but then I started putting a little more oomph right in here where it is metal on both sides. And as you can see, I'll pan in a little closer. It did flatten it out. And cause you want basically the truck line to be the same as the body line. And I will show you the three photos that I took of what it looked like when it came out of the box. So now that we have everything straightened out, we'll take a closer look at the car and the load. But first we'll take the car and I'll just take the load off. It's a molded plastic and uh, like I said, we'll take a closer look. So let's look at the really nice details of this car. And this does have the rotating, like I said, bearing caps. Let me see if I can make it move a little bit. There we go. And we'll just pan, you got a nice fine print. And, you know, depending on the model you got, 
it depends if it had these jack pads. Some were further down the car. Some, I think, didn't have them at all. It depended on what railroad, you know, wanted when they bought them. Let's just take a look at the end. Don't see the details there. Really nicely done. I think this is some of the best looking brake lines I've ever seen on a car. You got your individual grabs, your brake handle, uh, metal couplers, that's always appreciated, and your coupler release bar. That's B end. And at the A end, I have the coupler height gauge. And you can see, once I got it back in alignment, bam. It's uh, pretty much perfect for coupler height. Very nice. That's the A end, which is almost identical, really. So let's take a look, closer look at the top and bottom. Okay, so we'll pan in on the top. You can see the, it's got the see-through grates on it. And once again, depending on what uh, road you got, the decks did change on the model. So some had wood, some had metal. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to class one so you can check out all different uh, road names that came in and the variations of the body. And they were saying at class one in their videos that these decks would often get really uh, chewed up in a way because they would put loads on these then weld mounting points. And then the next guy who got the, the uh, flat car would have to cut off or grind off the old welded uh, you know, angle iron pieces and they would weld on their own. Like on the load here these pipes would be welded to the car and the load. And of course, you know, how many runs these cars would do? Hundreds of hundreds of uh, runs. There'd be all kinds of welded pieces on, grounded off, cut off. So I imagine those decks got pretty uh, interesting looking after a few years. All right, so let's look at the bottom. I'll just pick it up. And, uh, has brake detail on the trucks and you can just see the you see the brake cylinder there are details that are not showing it real well I'll turn here you can see the trucks better in the, in the brakes on the wheels now there are lines it's kind of hard to see what I can see in here. There are lines running through the car. But as expected, a beautiful model. All right, so let's take a closer look at the uh, load that I bought. Okay, so this is from Class One's website. And these are the four loads that they had available. And you have your pump, which I got, your drum and bearing, which I originally was going to get because it's a tall load. But uh, I decided to get the pump because it put me up over free sh to free shipping. And plus, uh, I know a couple of pipe or pump companies in New York State. So I thought that was kind of cool. This is the old generator, and this is a modern generator. That thing is big. So at last I knew those still are available on their website. Some of the uh, cars have sold out. So you'll have to check it out yourself and see which ones are available. But let's take a look. Yep. at the uh, pump that I got. So I believe this is the color it's molded in. The ends where the shaft is. I'd love to see what this looks like in real life. Like is this kind of shaft of bare steel or whatever? But I plan on painting this a little bit like a semi-gloss gray. And where is it? Like this, this little hatch here. I know uh, I looked online. Some of these times they're painted like green. 
these little hatches. And one place, the uh, lift rings here, or whatever you want to call them, were painted black. So I might do that just to break up the grayish look of the whole thing. But, you know, overall, really nice. And it's molded just to fit in those cars, so there's not a lot of, you know, you have to mess around with it. You might have to bend these a little bit to get the fit perfect. But I want to paint these like a bare metal and then start weathering like a blackish and a rustless look because they would just gotten bare pipe and weld it to the car and to the load. All right, so let's put this back on the car and do a little run-by.